So I'll be walking you through the steps of how to create a Facebook page, and if you've created it already, you can still watch this video to follow the steps how to optimize your Facebook page. So if you're new to Facebook or have never made a Facebook page, you may ask, do I really need a Facebook page? So what I love about Facebook pages are that they're an instant connection to your audience, an instant connection to your customer. So this is a great place to connect and interact and share stories and share relevant info about your brand. So ultimately, this Facebook page gives you that voice. And you can build your reputation instantly with fast customer service, reaching new markets with this Facebook page, growing a new social cloud of following and likes with this Facebook community all in one place on your Facebook page. What I love is the instant feedback. Say for one of my clients that are launching a new line and they're unsure about one style versus the other, post some mock-ups of the images on your Facebook page and ask your current customers to vote which one they prefer, which one they like, which one they would buy. So besides all these great things about building a community, there are a lot of additions that Facebook is constantly rolling out. So you have the opportunity to post events, integrate various apps. Some people I know don't even have a .com. They just sell products via their Facebook page because of the apps available enabling that. Then Facebook pages are also great for polling your audience, like I said, or running contests and different promotions. So at the end of the day, what is a Facebook page? It's basically a specific page on Facebook that enables you to capture your specific audience via a like. So every time you get a like, these people are now liking your page and accepting what you post to show up in their newsfeed. Now this percent is actually lowering organically only 10 to 20% of what you post will show up in your audience's newsfeed. But as I'll explain later, there's promotions and various other things we can do to increase the visibility of your post. So first off, you need to sign up for a Facebook account, or if you have already, go to the top right corner and click the arrow. In this menu, you'll see the create page option. So right here, click this, create page. Now on this page, you'll be able to pick what specific type of page you want to create. Local business, company, brand, cause, entertainment, artist, band, public figure. So don't let this option confuse you. Just break it down and see which one fits your business or service correctly. For local business or place, you're going to need an address. So if you just have a product or a brand that you're selling on Amazon or Etsy possibly, but you don't actually have a brick and mortar, you can't put your home address, unfortunately. So therefore, you would be in the brand and product one. So that's basically the difference between the two. Local business, you need that address. Then the other four categories are pretty obvious. Company, organization, institution. We're talking colleges, big sizable companies that have more than one location. Then for the lower half section of Facebook pages, say I'm promoting a movie on Kickstarter campaign. I want to start an entertainment Facebook page. Say I'm running for senator, I'm going to start a public figure Facebook page. Once you select this, you're going to be asked to fill out a lot of category details, but fill it out as completely as you can. You're going to be asked for a category, a description, what your website is paired with this Facebook page, and so on. Always click Save Info as you build this page. But luckily I'll be showing you later how we can come back and edit this info in case you forgot something. So that's why there's that skip option in case you don't have the description readily available or the address or something else. So fill this out the best you can and we can come back to it later on. After you fill out that info, it'll prompt you to build that audience. The first thing they're going to ask you is to boost the page. They're going to ask for the credit card, ask for what demographic you want to push it to. But make sure to click skip on that because obviously throughout this course I'll be teaching you the right way to boost posts and not just blankly through this front end promotion from Facebook. The back end ads manager is a lot more detailed so that's what I'll be teaching you in. After you deny that promoted boost that Facebook offers, the next screen they'll ask you to invite your friends. And I like this. This is a great way to get that initial following, those initial 25 likes. You need 25 likes or fans before you can actually set your Facebook domain. So invite the people you think would like what you're going to be posting, what you're going to be promoting. Next, you want to start to build out that page and post content. Make it look like somebody is at this actual business. You don't want to just make a Facebook page to say you made a Facebook page. 
You want to build it out, make it look really professional, post some content. I like to have at least 10 posts on my page before I even push it to anybody, before I start ads or before I invite friends. Put some relevant text, some relevant statuses, post some pictures, some videos. Now this all doesn't have to be original content, so don't get overwhelmed there. You can just recurate other people's stuff and post it on this page. Another great feature about Facebook pages allows you to schedule your post. So to have your Facebook page not look like you just built it in an hour, you can backdate post, you can schedule posts for the future. So it really helps you evenly distribute these posts and post you know, once a week, twice a week. You can schedule that. And then once you start to post some content, we can go into reports and see what time of day do you get the most post engagements? What day of the week do you get the most post engagements? Do you get the most likes and shares at 4 p.m. when people are just about ready to leave work? Or is it at 8 a.m. when people just get to work? Take those factors into account, and then you can schedule around that. So this is what I was talking about when we can backdate, future schedule, or just save draft. So it's just this drop down right next to the post button. So we can build out, we can post videos, uh, post photos, have events post on the day the event starts. This is a great way to really save you time and schedule your social media interactions. Then a nice tip, once you have something saved or it's just a save draft, it's scheduled, click publishing tools and that's where you can go in and edit and see what time, what is being posted, what day of the week, etc. So once you save a couple drafts of posts or schedule a couple posts to be made in the future, you can go and check and edit and even delete those under publishing tools. It's the tab at the top right of your Facebook page. So we have status, we have photos and videos. That final thing you see in your update box, offer or event. I really love the offers options for coupon codes around the holidays. So say Black Friday is coming up, I can create an offer of 25% off, but it expires by Cyber Monday. One note though, you have to have 50 likes on your page before you can create offers. You can create events right off the bat, but that offers thing, you have to have a little social following, a little social clout before they enable that.